Welcome back guys. If you're considering building your own house on your own land, there's so many questions you want to ask before you choose the right builder. Joining us right now is Erin Stetzer. She is a custom home builder and I want to be you in my next life. I've admired you from afar. So thank you for being with us. Yeah. There's well. so many things that you have to ask before yeah. you start. I want to know a little bit more about you first. How long have you sure. been building homes? And tell me about this house we're standing in. Yeah, sure. So I've been building homes for about 20 years. And I started out in the production world of buildings, so in subdivisions where we would build one home after another, right? So sort of starter homes. And then um, when we started to have a family, I would do a kitchen or a bathroom, and it has sort of grown into, um, we're in the luxury home building business now. So this home right here is a home that we just finished. They're actually moving in. We're totally invading their turf. Mm -hmm. they're, they're happy to, it to have us. It is stunning. It yeah, is stunning. It is. And you built this from the ground up. Every detail was you. Yes, me and our team, mm -hmm. right? So um, yes, we have, you know, the architect was Reagan Andre Architecture and Shannon Mann was the designer. Okay, it's very daunting for my buyers who had to choose a builder. You have to interview and you don't even know where to start. Give us some tips on choosing and hiring the right builder. Right, okay, so first thing is know thyself, right? So like, if I'm going to build a home, I need to know where am I in my phase of life or my family's phase of life. And so if I'm a starter home person, then I need to know that and align with that builder. So maybe we go to the suburbs and we meet with production builders. And so the more a home is built, the, the the budget is set. refined, yeah. set, right? There's a comfort level in that, right? And that's why it's a great starter home. When we move into semi-custom building, which is you can, you have a floor plan and you can move some walls, but unknowns tend to pop up a little bit more, which, you know, the budget can shift a little bit, maybe a little less known about the budget. Then we go to full on custom luxury home building. Everything's new. So like every, Every piece of that house is brand new, never been built, and we figure it out with our team. And that's where the team is really critical. Um, the architect, engineer, designer, all of that team is developed before construction starts. And you want them to know each other, have worked together before, so there's this cohesiveness and unity about vision. Yes, vision, and then also familiar, you know, they're familiar with the trade base. We know what can be executed. We have meetings on site weekly with these trades, you know, the trim carpenter. How are we going to execute this? What do you think? We need to see a, a mock-up, right? So the team really understands how to push towards a vision and then work on it weekly in terms of getting to that vision. So you say the first thing is alignment. So think about your budget. Yes. And you will most likely go above budget anytime you build a house. Yes. Just a right. lot for that and just know that. Yes. And the second thing is quality. Yes. Um, and again, that goes back to knowing what, you know, like your expectations would be and, and target budget, right? So if my target budget, um, if I'm moving into a starter home, then I need to be realistic about what I expect in terms of quality mm -hmm. and embrace it, right? That's, that's where I am or that's where you are in life and that's, that needs to be clear. When we get into luxury home building, which is the opposite end of the spectrum, quality goes way up, expectations go way up, communication goes way up, top notch. Everything about that experience is top notch. It's five star, it's white glove. White glove. And you have to expect people to over communicate because that's what you're paying for. Yes, and okay. over communication is the number, the number one thing in building a home. Good news, bad news, no news, you know, it, it all happens in luxury home building. Right, and I, I feel the same in my industry too. Over communicate, even if you have no news to give. Just say, hey, I'm staying on top of this, but we don't have anything to say, I'll, I'll reach out to you tomorrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also you say talk to people, what does that mean? Right, so um, if you're going to get into building a house and it's never been built before, you really wanna be familiar with what you're getting into. So, you know, let's say you've hired an architect or you're looking to hire an architect. Well, who has that architect drafted homes for? Talk to those people. Testimonials, people they've built for. Yes, and it's really important. I know it sounds like a little bit like cliche or cheesy, but it's really, really important to understand how that relationship and, and really understand what you're getting into because you have a vision. And, and you know, you need to find the right architect that can bring you to that vision. And you say, um, ask them to share their surprises and how they were handled. Yes. So how do they deal with conflict resolution? 
right. Yes, that's a big one. Um, it happens all day long, every day. That's my entire job is conflict resolution, whether it be with materials or, or trades or clients, right? That things come up and it's an emotional process. Well, I need to be willing to you know step in and talk about it, right? Right, especially when you're building three, five, 10, $15 million homes yes. in, in your price range. Yes. And you say, understand their business model. How does a builder serve their clients? The questions you ask should be how many projects you have going on at once? Is that for That example? is an awesome question. And that really, that is probably the best question because it gives you a feel for how, how will this builder treat me? Like, not necessarily treat me, but like, what is my experience going to be? Like, are they fully focused on my home? Well, if that's my expectation, I want to understand, well, do I have a full-time project manager on site? Are we meeting weekly? Is the team meeting weekly? Like, I have all these, these things that I want to happen um, during construction. And, and you also want to ask, like, how do you work with your trades? How long have they been with you? What kind of trades do you have? Because there are grades A, B, and C. Yes, okay, yeah. so that's another great question. So we are asked very often, hey, you know, here's our budget. We know you have A plus trades. Can we go with maybe a B trade for certain categories? And I mean lower quality? Lower it, quality, okay. right? Um, and so I'll give you my real answer today. My real answer today is no. And, and I'll tell you why. Um, I'm a, I, we like to be accommodating mm -hmm. because we want people to have their home and we want them, to, you know, to, we want to bring their dreams to them. However, there's a risk. And when that risk arises, because I've seen it enough, there is risk, I then have to go back in after the B trade, clean up the mess, which costs money, which costs time. And so I've just made a decision, A plus, right? A plus, A plus. Now it might be a good fit. Other builders have A, B, and C, and everyone just needs to be on the same page that this is the expectation with the C trade versus an A plus trade. Again, it goes back to communication. Yes, yes, and having exactly. people know on the same page. Okay, well, I could talk to you all day. In my next life, I want to be Erin. And I want to be Lily, <laughs> and then we'll, I can travel everywhere with you. I love this. When we come back, I want to talk about what adds value to your home. What can you do to add value to your home now? We'll talk to Erin about that right after the break.